Sounds like we're at the MCG. I love it. Uh, this is exciting. Uh, just had a good chat with the boys out the back. They're actually out there ripping their shirts off, putting the Geelong Guernseys on. So if any of you girls want to quickly run. No, no. All right. All right, all right, all right. Too late. Too late. Um, so they're going to be out here very shortly and we'll kick the show off. Um, these, uh, these, as I explained to you earlier in my little intro, um, this is the That's Good Footy Panel show. These are the only live and interactive footy panel shows going around where the fans meet the players and the players meet the fans. The shows are for the passionate supporters. The show allows you to um, see the players in the way that you've never seen them before. I'm pretty ready to go, are you? Yeah. All, right, all right, let's get on with it. Uh, please welcome to the show. He's our first panellist. He was born on the 30th of July, 1998. He's played a total of 55 games and he's kicked a total of 43 goals. Lynn, don't get too excited, all right? OK, he's kicked 43 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2020 when he plays for the Geelong Football Club. He wears the number 45 on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Brad Close. We are Geelong, the greatest team of all. We are Geelong, we're always on the ball. We play the game as it should be played. Great. Jeez, what a warm audience. What a warm, warm, repl uh, 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 well, what a reception. How do you feel, mate, walking out to that? Yeah, actually a bit overwhelmed. Um, it's good to see so many people <laughs> and um, very enthusiastic for a good night. Yeah, uh, he means that too. I'm not, he's not making it up. We're in for a big night. It's going to be good. Uh, we've got a lot to get through, so I want to get through it as quickly as I can. Let's get our second panellist out here. He was born on the 30th as well, uh, the 30th of December in 1988, 10 years earlier. He's played a total of 258 games. He's kicked 195 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2011. When he plays for the Geelong Football Club, he wears a number seven on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Isaac Smith. We are Geelong. Greatest team of all, we are Geelong, we're always on the ball. We play the game as it should be played. All right. Park's a long way down the highway. We're up here tonight, Mulgrave Country Club. Boys, help yourselves to a water whenever you feel like it. Um, welcome to you both. Brad, your first time on the show. Um, it's great to have you here, mate. Seriously. Yeah, I'm wrapped to be here. Um, obviously, can't wait for the night ahead. Obviously, the schedule looks nice, so yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, we have got a lot to get through, but I just want to make sure that there is... You know, let's make him feel as comfortable as an old man into a warm bath, because that's what we're looking at here. Um, uh, in, speaking of old men into warm baths, what I wanted to suggest is, uh, Isaac, welcome back to the show. Uh, last time we had you on, you were wearing brown and yellow. Um, they were going that yeah, way. Yeah, brown and gold. Yeah. Uh, and I can guarantee no one in this room was here. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did, on the way in, I did drive into Waverley Park and have a bit of a look and show Brad where a bit of magic happened. Yeah. But, uh, no, up, no pull, those days are in the past. Yeah, pulled up and uh, just showed everybody the medallions through the, through the window. Yeah, my uh, yeah. code didn't work, though, on the... Uh, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, excellent. Well, it's, it's great to have you, Mary. He's in Geelong Colours this, uh, at this time of the year and uh, wonderful to have you here. What I wanted to do, and I just want to explain myself as I go here, um, tonight is, a, is obviously a celebration of Geelong winning the flag, but it's more about getting to know you guys as well, all right? And that's what we want to do as we go through it. Um, so let's get stuck into our first little segment. It's chatting up about the grand final of 2022. We are the that's you guys. You are the champions. Uh, firstly, let me say congratulations on the win. Terrific result. Uh, and when I say result, I'm not just talking about um, the actual margin and the win, but more specifically the inclusiveness of what the game actually represented, because that's really what I want to focus on here. Everyone that witnessed the day, as you guys did, um, from the Robbie Williams uh, singing You're the Voice through to Tyson Stengel's amazing career comeback, uh, four goals in the grand final, Cam Guthrie going off uh, to let Parfit uh, come on to experience a goal. Um, it obviously was an amazing experience for him to be able to do that in a grand final, which also happened for Sam De Koning. Um, he went through that. Memories that will last a lifetime for those boys. Cameron and Dangerfield coming to the club, actually coming to Geelong to do what they were brought to do. 
um, come on and help you guys win a flag. Uh, that was really important. That actually got to happen as well. Equally as important was Joel Selwood's day. I was thinking, when I was actually writing it, I sat down and I thought, if you had to write a script and you started to put it together and you thought, let's see if this grand final day could pan out this way, um, it'll be a memory that'll last forever. Um, and basically it'll go like, this will be the climax to it. If you could wish for it to get pan out any better, you couldn't. And it basically it went along the lines of, from Levi, um, him walking out, grabbing Levi, Gary Ablett Jr.'s son, uh, going out with him, that look on his face, I put it up on my page, I think it reached about 190,000 views, um, which was just amazing. That was uh, just a sight to behold. From that then going on to grabbing Sam, the water boy, and bringing him over the fence and him being able to be part of the grand final as well, to then presenting his boots to little Archie, the Oz kicker, um, and then to find out later on that Brit is now pregnant and he's about to have a baby. Um, seriously, think about it. That is amazing when you put all of those things and line them up. You couldn't get any, any better result for he as an individual and what he's meant to that club. Tell us what it meant for you guys to witness that and be part of it. Yeah, I think anyone that's met Joel um, knows that the person he is um, just yeah, outside of football. So uh, it doesn't take long to yeah, get to know him and um, know the type of person he, he is. And then um, to be a part of that day um, with Joel and yeah, seeing Levi run out with Joel and um, obviously Sammy sharing the moment. I think it was just something we got to share with all our fans and members, which was amazing. Well... I don't know how many of you know Joel personally, but I think he did write the script. He, uh, you, you reckon that's yeah, exactly he knew exactly, how, he he knew it, exactly yeah. how it was going yeah. to unfold. Yeah. He's a very uh, methodical. well-planned, yeah. methodical type of guy. Yeah. So, yeah. no, it was uh, it was special, and uh, I was even fortunate. Uh, my wife uh, brought my little daughter onto the oval. My son was too small, um, but I, uh, Joel, and myself got a great photo out on the field as well, and. Yeah. At that stage, none of us knew that he was retiring. He'd only told, I think, one or two people. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there were some unbelievable moments that occurred on that day. And uh, fortunately for me, it wasn't my first. Um, so I was able to sort of sit back. I remember yeah, right. walking around the Oval and uh, I was probably 30 metres off the fence where all these young tackers were right in and amongst it. Yeah. Um, but you actually got to just sit back and take it in. Yeah. And, uh, I could see Joel out of the corner of my eye most of the way. He was doing something pretty similar. So wow. it was a special day. It's, is it one of those pinch me moments to know that you're part of it from your perspective? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, it's, it's funny footy because you play uh, to win premierships. Mm. Yeah, you pinch yourself to know you're a part of it, but you also put in a hell of a lot of work. Absolutely. Uh, to make sure it happens. So uh, we're very fortunate. I suppose uh, more to the point, I know that you put in a lot of work, but... I suppose what I wanted to find out is what it was like for you to witness what he was going through. Because it, it, as, it, as you say, the script was written and he probably wrote a lot of it himself, but how was that to sit back and just go, that's amazing. Everything that could have happened, happened for you to watch. Yeah, well, to I witness. think um, Joel, but it also played out for so many people. He messaged Paddy. Paddy took a, mm. um, obviously he wanted to come home, but he also took a big risk coming back and yeah. um, he... I think the whole idea about him coming back was to get home and to win a premiership. Yeah. Um, Jezza took a massive punt coming down. Uh, personally, I took a big risk coming down. It was an ageing list, and yeah. that's been well publicised. Uh, so there was a lot of stories yeah. along the way yeah. um, within the team. Uh, Hawk won his third, but as a senior guy, it's different when you win them when you're a junior, yeah. uh, probably close his age to them when you win them when you're older. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there was a hell of a lot of background stories yeah. in the team, and I'm sure they'll continue to come out over the next 12 months. For but, sure. Uh, it, was a, it was a pretty special day. Yeah. Oh, they'll, they'll be spoken about for eternity. They'll be sports nights nice for the next 20 years, and you'll never have to pay for a beer again. That's wonderful. Um, <laughs> within except, the... except if I go to Hawthorne. <laughs> yeah, right. OK. Yeah, yeah, no pubs in Hawthorne allowed. Um, we then move on to you, Isaac. Four Premiership medallions and now a Norm Smith medal to boot. 32 disposals and three goals in the, in, uh, on the day. You made the day your own as well. Yeah, oh, well, it was on the back of probably Maxi Holmes missing the grand final, which was yeah. unfortunate. I'd been playing a different role next to Closey all year, but um, because Maxi went down, I was able to go back to the wing and yeah. got a little bit of freedom. But, 
Yeah, it, uh, individually it fared out OK. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a wry <laughs> smile if I've ever seen one. Um, tell me about this, mate. What a fantastic story uh, that you wrote. You had a, a grand final goodbye. You had to go up and see your grandfather in Albury, uh, which was a last-minute dash uh, during the, the week. Uh, at the same time, on grand final day, you got stuck in an elevator, I understand, yeah. as well. Um, tell us about the lead-up for you, including the, the emotional trip for your grandfather and also um, how grand final day for went. Put it in your words. How, what was the week like? Yeah, it was, well, um, Pop sort of fell ill about 10 days before the grand final and um, I rushed up to Aubrey. I think it was the Wednesday afternoon yeah. uh, before the prelim final. So then spent 24 hours with him, which was uh, unbelievable. Um, he was still mentally and physically there. He just sort of went into heart failure, which was... A um, bit upsetting, but uh, it, was a, it was a beautiful time for our family, but also quite an upsetting time. And I raced back to play the prelim final, and um, I'm sure the fans out here will remember that I had two kicks in the first half. So uh, I'm not sure my head was in the game, to yep. be honest. Yep. Um, and fortunately, the guys played really well. And then uh, on the Wednesday night leading into the grand final, uh, he passed away, and um, which was very upsetting for the yep. family, but um, also a nice little bit of motivation going into the game. He was a huge fan of mine. And then uh, game day, the lift started playing up at the hotel and uh, I got stuck in the lift with uh, five or six people and I was starting to get a bit steamy in there and we hit the, <laughs> hit the, um, oh, you know, bell, the alarm bell, bell thing, yeah. called, the te- called the technician and they said, oh, we'll be here in two and a half, three hours. And we are half an hour from catching the bus to go to the ground and I was like, well, that's not going to work, mate. You need to sort something out. <laughs> So we were stuck for about 15 minutes and then it just automatically, the doors opened on a random level, got out and I took the stairs to get down. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a few nervous moments. That, seriously, you can't imagine anything like that happen on one of, your, one of the biggest stages. That's, it just trips me out. Um, Brad, what experience for you, mate? Um, two goals and 18 disposals in your first AF, or in your first grand final at AFL level. Tell us what the experience of the week leading up to and game day was like, in your words as well. What was that like? Yeah, obviously being a part of um, the losing grand final a couple of years back um, up in, up in uh, Brisbane it was an emergency, so um, it was a feeling of being so close yet also not part of the actual 22 to take the field, so that was a bit of a tough one as well. Um, but good thing was I got to be there with the boys and experience what it was like, but um, obviously getting back to Melbourne, um, I reckon the last granny I'd been to, we watched I, with me old man, he was a Hawks supporter, but not anymore. We watched Isaac run amok um, against Sydney, I think it was, and um, just the feel of being in Melbourne for grand final week. Um, so having that back this year was amazing. Yeah. Um, the parade, um, not that the one on the boat was that fun. It was a bit slow. Gilligan's <laughs> <laughs> um, Island, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, she was a bit slow, the old barge, yeah. but um, yeah. the rest of the trip was fun. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the feel and the build-up to the game... Um, yeah, it was awesome. Had heaps of family and friends come over, so being to, able to spend it with them was um, massive as well. What was the elation like for you when the, when the final siren went, being that you're now in a premiership winning team? Yeah, I think it, it was pretty strange. Obviously, a three-quarter time, um, I think a lot of us knew that we were going to win the game from there. And I remember in the last quarter, I knew where my family were sort of sitting and I kept looking up there, just sort of trying to see if I could spot anyone. And... It still didn't sink in, I guess, and it probably still hasn't sunk in that we got the job done. But, um, yeah, as soon as the siren went, um, I wasn't far from Joel. And, um, yeah, it was awesome to go up to him sort of as the final siren went. And that's something that, yeah, I guess I'll remember forever. That's brilliant. I love it. When you both joined the Geelong Football Club, you both knew of the history that the Hoops represented, both from a cultural perspective but also from the core structure. There's a real buy-in down there, Isaac. You're coming from a club, a family-renowned club, as in Hawthorne, and then coming down to Geelong. Um, what was your understanding of what went on behind the closed doors down there? And, and was that part of the reason that you wanted or, or thought, that yeah, I can, I can go down there and do this? Yeah, there's a lot of thinking uh, yeah. around that. I guess the biggest thing is you never quite know what happens behind closed yeah. doors. And uh, certain things can get pushed out in the media and you buy into that, but they might not be so true. But moving yeah. to Geelong... Uh, that was one of the big reasons, getting yeah. back to sort of our country roots and yeah. uh, enjoying that aspect of footy. But I think the ability for Geelong to be able to pull away from the uh, Melbourne bubble and effectively be a country football club yeah. that sometimes plays at the MCG in a big game wow. uh, is pretty special. And yeah. 
it means when you actually rock up to the club to train, everyone's pretty relaxed. Yep. Um, it all works very smoothly. And um, fortunate for me, I've got two kids, but I think there's 13 or 14 guys on the list that have kids and no yeah. other team's anywhere near that in the competition. No. So, uh, yeah, it's amazing. They can't force you to stay around the footy club when you've got daycare pickup or something like that. <laughs> it's just um, they can take on the wives if they really want to yeah. keep us there. So, uh, no, we're very lucky. So, where'd that come from? Yeah, I get it. Um, I just wanted to allude to this one point. Most of you are probably aware of it. I'm not sure. You guys probably would be too. This club, uh, since the 2011 Grand Final, have only once not played in the finals. That is a huge record. Is that Was that part of your thinking about going down there um, and going, this is a club that's they're still going places. They haven't left, like, top four, top eight. You know, they've been playing in finals that whole time. Uh, a little bit. Um, obviously... I left um, I for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it was funny because um, it was a, an aging list, and everything that was get pretty in, printed in the media was mm. they're going to tip over the edge. They're going to tip over the edge. But I had some great discussions with Sel and Scotty yep. um, during that period, and we all came to the conclusion that we don't think it's going to tip over the edge. We think we've got at least another two or three years wow. with this exact list with a shot at it. Um, and Andrew Mackey's done a great job the last month yeah. being able to reju rejuvenate the list. So, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a punt, mm. um, but the punt's paid off. Bloody oath, hasn't it, Just? That's really ruined. I love it. Um, Brad, your thoughts on um, a club that's this successful and has been this successful for such a long period of time? Uh, do you have pinched yourself moments and go, geez, I'm lucky to be playing down at the hoops? Yeah, absolutely. Um, come from Mount Gambier originally, so Geelong's the closest um, AFL club to my hometown, so mm. that's something that worked in my favour. Yep. Um, small country town as well, so um, like Isaac said, getting back to the country is um, good, and then, um, yeah, it's something we talk about a lot at the club, the ability to play off in the finals each year. We're not um, ready to, I guess, roll over and just say, this might not be our year, so yep. um, it's something that drives the club each year, I reckon, and like you said, the recruiters with Wellesley and Mackie are um, just doing the job every year. Fantastic, I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the boys. That was great. Thanks for that insight. Questions. What's going to be happening here? Um, Ellie, you're going to be keeping score for Brad. Every time that he gets one right, you're just going to flip over the score paddle down there. That's Brad over you there. You won't be very busy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're going to be keeping score for him every time. And, and Kyle... Uh, you're going to be doing the same thing for Isaac, OK? So each time that they get one right, I'll let you know. Here come your questions, boys. All right? Let's see. Here you go. This is season 2022. Um, this, is a, this one's a bit of a who I'm at. Who am I? I kicked uh, winning goals to seal the victory for my team twice Norm. this year. Yes. Norm. Do you like that? No. Oh, sorry. No, nah, I like it. I like it. Uh, How good is that? Who is he? Uh, Jordan Ngoi. No. Would you like to would you like to have a go, or would you, or would you like me to finish the rest yeah, of the question? Okay, I kick I kick winning goals to seal the victory for my team twice this year against Essendon and the other against Colton. Who am I? Uh, is it Jamie Elliott? Correct, one point. All right, Ellie, he's got one point. Very good. Here we go. How many Toms were playing in the AFL Grand Final this year? And a bonus point if you can name them all. Toms. Toms. Brad. Toms. Oh, Brad. Brad. Okay. Uh, four. F four. No, you'd be wrong. Mm. Do you know how many? Yeah, one second. Um, five. Go one more. Six. Did you say six? six yeah, yeah, six would be six. right. So well well done. There's, there's and can you name them? There's Hawkins. Yes. Stewart. Yes. McCartan. Yes. Papley. Yes. Tom, we've got to have another one, don't we? Yes, you do. Um, far out. Far out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Atkins. Atkins. Yes. And there's one more. Yeah, one more. Not for us. No. Sydney. Tom, Ak Tom Hickey. Yes, there you go. All right, we'll give it to him. Well done. Sorry, Ax. Oh, that was good. <laughs> well done, boys. Um, so, Kyle, that's a point to you. Who, uh, who won the Brown Line with how many votes? How many votes? This year. <laughs> I, I've... I'm going to be honest here, I've never watched the Brown Line, so wow. I think the ones I've been to. OK. Yeah, right. Uh, We're not Brad. taking bets on this either, by the way. Brad. Patrick Cripps. Excellent. Ah, uh, 32. Close enough. That'll, yeah. Patrick Cripps with 29. Ellie, are you giving the points for that? Um, who, who won the Rising Star this year? Oh, is it, uh, Isaac? Yes. Is it Dacos? Yeah. What's his first name? 
uh, Nick. Yes, well done. Thank you. Uh, excellent. <laughs> I was about to say Josh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a point down there, Kyle. Um, prior to the AFL Grand Final, the last time Geelong and Sydney met, who won and by how much? In a Grand Final? No, just um, oh, prior to the Grand Final this year, the last time Geelong and Sydney met, who won and by how much did they win by? Brad, yes, Sydney please. won by... 27. No, Sydney by 30. Okay, that's no when points Bud kicked his thousand, wasn't yeah. it? Sorry? Is that when Bud kicked his thousand yeah. goal? Yeah. Um, that's another question in here, so oh, yeah. save Sorry. that answer. Oh, yeah. uh, what personal games milestone did Joel Selwood reach this Isaac. year? Isaac. 350. Correct, well done. That's a point, Guy. Um, who was the All Australian captain this year? Isaac. Tom Isaac. Morgans. Oh, he's on, he's on fire now. Look out. He's got his eye in, I think. Um, who sings the song up there, Kazali? Oh, it's uh, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot his name. Brad? That, that's so bad. Brad? Um, Michael Brady. Brady. Mike Brady, wow. Good, good guess, Brad. That was great. Yes, um, L, that's a point down there. Uh, which clubs did Geelong beat in the final series to make it to the grand Brad. final? Brad. Collingwood, Brisbane. That'll do. That was it. That'll do. It. Yep, lions on the pies. Another point, L. Um, how many games did Geelong win this year? Isaac. In, a, in, a, in a row. Isaac. Oh. Isaac. In a row. In a row. <laughs> well, I think it was 16, but I'm not sure if the grand final is included in that. I'm going to say 17. No, you'd be wrong. It's 15. Mm. Ah, That's okay. what it was. Okay. Uh, where did the Swans finish on the ladder this year at the end of the home and away season? Brad. Brad. Uh, and don't give us stuff as not fourth. an answer. No, not fourth. We'll talk. Uh, <laughs> well, you've already answered. Third. Yeah. Third. Isaac, third. Third, yeah, third it is. All right, well done, Kai. You got that one. Who was allegedly a naughty boy when he went overseas? Isaac. Isaac. Jordan Ngoi. There you go. There you go. Finally got Jordan Ngoi's name out and it was right. Um, that's another point to you, Kai. Uh, which coaches got the sack this year? Isaac. Isaac. Uh, Brett Ratton. Yes. Um, there was a North Melbourne one. Yep, it was, uh, was David Noble. Yes, very good. That's two. And there's one more. Three more. Uh, two more. Two more. Yeah. This year? Yep. Gee, who got sacked? Oh, uh, oh when the... Yeah, I said right. Uh, uh, then um, see the... Bombers. Oh. Uh, Brett Rutten. Uh, Brett no, Rutten. Ben Rutten. Ben Rutten. Yep, ben Rutten. And one more. One more. It's not a, it can't be a Melbourne. No, it wasn't. Um, Think of Moscow. What did you say? Think of Moscow. Oh, Moscow. G yeah. GWS, was it? Oh, yeah, yes. Leon. Leon yeah, Cameron. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, you, a point each down the front, all right, for that one. That was good, that was good. Um, I've got a couple more questions here for you. Who got goal of the year this year? <laughs> oh, yeah, Drapes. Sam Draper? Yeah. yeah, it is. It's Sam Draper. One I've you seen, got it. Oh, you got a point yeah. for that. Who Should got Mark goal. of the Year this year? Uh, <laughs> phone a friend. Phone a friend. Yeah. Pick someone. You got two down the front. Uh, Kai, you're my man. Who do you reckon, mate? <laughs> no, no answer. <laughs> no. Pass. L. Do you know? No. I was going, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, it was Mitch Georgiades. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, from Port Adelaide. Uh, who won the Anzac Day medal this year? And for a bonus Brad, point... Brad, oh. Ooh. Ginevan. Yep. And first first and name. Five. First name. Jack Ginevan. Ooh. That's two points, Al. Two points. How are we going down there score-wise? What are we sitting on? What's, what's the score? Eight. Eight versus... Seven. All right. Excellent. Eight versus seven. This is this is cutthroat stuff, boys. <laughs> How many games did North Melbourne win this year? Brad. Brad. One. Oh, so close. No. Isaac, two. Isaac, two. <laughs> two is correct. <laughs> there it is. Who won the Coleman medal this year for most goals kicked and how many goals? Isaac. Oh, Isaac. Charlie Kerno. Yes. Number? 62. Two, no, 64. Oh. So you get one point, all right? Uh, who joined the 1,000 goals Brad kicked? Isaac. Oh. Oh, Brad Isaac. Lance Franklin. Yeah, there you go. All right, that's the point there. Um, what was the name of the little Oz kicker who received Joel Selwood's boots? Isaac. Isaac? Uh, Archie. Yes. All right. What's the score down the front? 
Ten nine. Ten nine. So we've got a winner here in Kyle. Yes. All right. You both. Winners. What I'd like to do. Congratulations to both of you. Hey, you guys did really well. Thank you for doing that. Hey, Kai. Kai, there's a uh, there's a there's a there's a doona cover, a quilt cover, a single quilt cover. I presume he sings in a single bed. You haven't got a queen size or anything, no? Oh, you got a double, have you? All right. Jeez, oh, I should have asked. Days. Yeah. Oh, well, that's yours anyway. I didn't even have a big No, no that's yours. That's yours. Um, put put the paddle down. You don't get to take that home. Um, um, L. Oh, don't look so distressed. That's yours, darling. Congratulations. Well done. Oh, you did, yeah. you did wonderful. All you did was had to keep scoring. You did that. Thank you, guys. Well done. Thanks, boys. Thanks for playing along with that. Um, what I want to do now, as I explained to you off the top of the show, I want to get to know the boys a little bit better. I want you to get to know them a little bit better. We're going to do it in our first little segment here. It's called Who Are You? You enjoying it so far? You're all right? Yeah, you're all ready to go? Okay, good. Um, what I wanted to ask you boys, we're just going to go through a series of questions here. Um, what are your fondest memories of why you love footy? Like, what's your, your favourite and fondest memory of football as you were growing up? Something like that. Give us, um, give us a little bit of insight. Yeah, I reckon for me, uh, my old man played 400 games of country footy, so I obviously got to watch a fair few wow. of those growing up, which was um, amazing. And yeah, right. every game, I reckon, that I was old enough... When he was walking off, he'd always chair me off on his shoulders. So I think that was something that I always remember and um, wow. used to watch him run around. And it's probably why I love footy and what got me into it. I love that story. Excellent. What about you, Ozzy? Uh, I grew up in New South Wales, so mm. it's not like Victoria where the league is within an hour of each other. We were sort of three, four hours some days for yeah. a game of footy. So there was plenty of good bus trips, especially yeah. as we got older, on the way home. So... <laughs> uh, yeah, my memory, spending three, four hours to a game and three, four hours on the way home on a bus together with all wow, our mates. Beautiful, I love it. Um, when you were a kid, did you used to um, get dressed up in your footy gear and just play around the house? Was that something that you did? Yeah, I did. Yeah? I was uh, Stephen Kernan or Scott Camparelli. Yeah, right. Um, head to toe Carlton. So. Beautiful, up and down the house, kicking the ball, mum saying, take yeah, that thing Yeah, no, outside. there was a lot of Sharon marks on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that fell in too well. Brad, did you used <laughs> to do the same? I never had any brothers or anything growing up, so okay. I used to kick the balloon around so at least it wouldn't go too far. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, that's good. No, I like that. Um, did you go to bed with a footy close by? Uh, I, I do have photos of me being a baby with a footy in okay. uh, the bassinet. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's kosher these days with kids. I think you're not meant to have anything in the bassinet, but yeah. I survived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, interesting. <laughs> you're here to tell the story. Brad? I don't no. think I ever. No, no I wasn't one to sort of sleep with one under the arm or anything. Yeah, okay. Um, what about at school during um, recess or lunchtime? Were you, the, were you the kind of guys that dominated in playground access? Yeah, I reckon every day we're out there and yeah. come home with dirty trousers, mum would be fuming. I like it, nice. No, it was Australian Fairy League in New South Wales, so we were all rugby. Of course. In the uh, rugby league in the yeah. playground. Okay, when yeah. you finally, how old were you when you made the trek down? To Melbourne? Yeah, Mel oh, to Melbourne, I was 21. Yeah, right, yeah. okay. Okay, so you weren't dominating the schoolyard at that stage, were you? No. Okay, what was more important when you were growing up, taking a specky over your mates or banging a ridiculous goal? Goal. Yeah, goal. I'm not very, it wasn't oh, very tall, so. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, well. <laughs> There's kids here. <laughs> yeah. What was yeah, yours? Yeah, taking a goal. Kicking yeah. a goal, yeah, yeah, let's just get to it. Thanks, ladies, thanks very much. Um, who did you barrack for growing up, boys? Adelaide Crows for me. Okay. Yeah, I was blues. Yeah, right, okay, well, you said that before. Going back to your first game, right, you've just been told, and this is going back to your early days, but um, you've just been told that you're going to be playing this week. Who was the first person you told and what was their reaction? Can you remember that? Um, well, for me, it got released to the media that I was playing before I even got told. Um, I don't think the coaches had made their mind up yet, so I had everyone ringing me telling me I was playing before I could tell anyone. Really? So, um, we're over in Perth in the hub too, so... Wow. Um, yeah, that's what was that? I... Was that uh, tell us about that. What was that like? Yeah, it was weird because I was ringing, well, messaging coaches saying, sort of, am I playing? Um, and yeah. they're like, oh, we're not sure yet. And I was like, well, this is going to look a bit awkward if I don't end up playing. And wow. phone's going off. And, so um, you force their hand. You, you so maybe, maybe I told them. And, uh, yeah, Scotty... No, nah, eventually Scotty called me down. And, uh, yeah, yeah it, was, it was nice to Amazing. go down and actually hear the wow. news. Could you tell us about yours. Uh, I was across the road, but uh, I was doing work experience in the city 
Okay. Um, I was working with a guy called Sam. He's a stockbroker in the city. I was doing a bit of work experience with him, and Clarko called me when I was in the lift. And when I got up another out of the lift story. Yeah, another lift. I'm a big fan of lifts. <laughs> uh, and I got out of the lift, and as it opened, Sam, who I'd only met once before, was right. the first person I saw as I was getting off the phone. And I told Sam, he's one of my best mates now, but. Um, yeah, I was a, he was the first bloke I told, pretty much a random in the street. No? That's excellent, wow. <laughs> what was the emotion like for you when you got to put the jumper on the f- for the first time in the change rooms? And it doesn't matter about colour, I just want to know what was the emotion like? You're now playing at AFL level, you're not mucking around anymore, the jumper goes on, what was the emotion like? Oh, uh, mine was a little bit weird because I made my debut with Paul Piopolo, um, if you all remember him, and he was a Norwood boy from Adelaide and John Platten presented both our Guernseys. Okay. Um, and John Platten knew Paul Piopolo. So he talked about Poppy for 10 minutes and presented the jersey and then just gave me mine. So <laughs> um, the emotion, I was a little bit confused at that stage. Wow. I thought, oh, isn't this meant to be a special moment? Yeah. No. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. We played Port Adelaide over there on Friday yeah. night, which was, yeah. uh, which was nice. And, yeah, I, I think um, it's a childhood dream. And uh, probably the thing that resonated with me the most was all the people that had worn that jumper over the history of that jumper. And so I was number 16 at Hawthorne. Terry Wallace called me. Uh, Andy Gowers called wow. me and got a couple of other texts off number 16. So Jeez, that was pretty special. That'd be, that, yeah, that is good. Uh, Brad, what was it like for you? Yeah, I got my Guernsey off Tommy Stewart. Um, obviously, locker next door neighbour in the locker room. Um, so had the parents in on a Zoom call. Obviously, we we're in the hub over in Perth. Yeah. Um, pissing down rain in Perth. It was yeah. a pretty atrocious night. I'm um, glad I had the long sleeve on. Um, but yeah, open up the box with my Guernsey and there's a handwritten letter from Joel or a typed up letter from Joel with his signature, which is wow. pretty special as well yeah. that I've kept and unfortunately got a bit soggy because someone threw my jumper back on top of the, oh. the letter after the game and gave me the box and I didn't realise. Oh, no. Um, but, yeah, we got a new one typed yeah. out anyway. But uh, th- So that emotion, just th- that you're finally putting the Geelong jumper on, it's been a childhood dream, as you said, you were growing up, you loved your football. Uh, just give us that a little bit of insight when you first actually put the jumper on. What did you feel like? Yeah, I was sort of a bit like you pinch yourself, but sort of yeah. just take a moment and a yeah. um, bit of disbelief, I guess, yeah. and then when you sort of run out and... Um, to look at some of the people you're playing with as well, just to think, you know, they're your idols when you're younger yeah. and um, yeah. that you're oh, actually thanks, teammates. <laughs> <laughs> Present company oh. included, I would imagine, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't, you weren't quite there, mate. No, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> um, Did you guys used to collect footy cards when you were growing up? And if you did, what was it like when you first saw you on one? Did you used to collect them? I'm coming from New South Wales, I get it, but... Well, I hardly fit on the... Um, I could hardly see myself on my first footy card. I was that skinny, so really, uh, okay. I didn't quite like looking at the photos. I yeah, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't have mind a bit of airbrushing and <laughs> a bit of photo shopping. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I used to collect them out of the uh, Smith Chips packets. If anyone remembers oh, those yeah. ones, you yeah. get them out and brush off the crumbs. And <laughs> I haven't seen any of myself in a chip packet yet, but I have <laughs> seen a few. A few cards have circulated. It's uh, yeah, wow. yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. Does everyone in the family? This is, I like this question for you. Does everyone now in the family, Barrick, for who you play for, or does there still mixed divisions, fence sitters, anything like that? And I talk about extended family as well, uncles, aunties, that sort of thing. Everyone now all on board with the, the cats? Yeah, pretty yeah. well, which is strange that my old man was diehard Hawthorne, so... Yeah, right. <laughs> um, didn't take him long at all, it just shows, yeah, what it wow. sort of means to him as well, I guess. Okay, so. yep. And mum, obviously. Mum was crows with me, so our yep. household was a bit divided. Okay. Um, but nah, she's no, she's all on board now. Yeah, yep. absolutely. You? No, dad's still a Carlton supporter <laughs> and doesn't give a stuff. No, he lo- he he loves watching <laughs> me play, so I'm very lucky. Yeah. Um, mum just supports me, so she flicks Sydney pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and one, of, I've got three sisters, and one of them married into a big Geelong family, so. Wow. Um, yeah, no, everyone's pretty much too long now. Yeah, so, right. Okay. Yeah. All one, I'm over. Um, question can be either either club for you, but can you remember the first day when you turn up? To tr- like, it's your first day. You, you, you're turning up, for example, I'll use you as the example. You're turning up to Cadinia Park. You, you don't know really where to park. Which door do I go in? Um, you know, have I got a swipe card to get in? You go in and you don't know where to sit. What's, what's that first day like? What, yeah, was, it, what was it like for you? Remember for me, um, I sat down in the cafe, went in for breakfast first as a group of us new draftees and Pat Dangerfield, obviously a Crows player, or old Crows player when I was growing up, sat down next to me in the cafe, um, buys me a coffee and I'm going, oh, you know, this is unbelievable still. Like I've 
been drafted, I'm at the club, but it still feels strange. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, shit, I've got to buy a, pa- a coffee back. I feel bad. <laughs> like, he shouted me a coffee. Nah, you like, don't have to make buy sure. Yeah. No. We've realised that now. <laughs> Take anything from him now, but um, yeah. just remember my first day, yeah, sitting next to Patrick Dangerfield. Like, I told every person I knew, I reckon. Um, How fantastic. Yeah, it was that. awesome. Uh, did anyone play any pranks on you? Like, oh, go and sit over there. That's a good spot to sit. Yeah, Gary Rowan's a bit of a prankster around the place. Right. Um, Remember, I was in the toilet and I just saw toilet paper flying over the door a couple of times and it didn't take me long to figure out who it was from, so... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> OK, and what about you? And as I said, it could be either club, uh, but... Oh, we'll go Geelong. Yeah. Uh, I had a little bit more confidence walking into the Geelong footy club yeah. than I did the Hawthorne one. Uh, was this, can I just ask, though, was there a moment of, like, nervous anticipation or trepidation that, you know, you have been playing at Hawthorne, you, you've played against all these guys, but now you're walking in and you're actually going to be playing for them? Yeah, well, it's, it's funny. In footy, you come across a lot of other footballers uh, just in everyday life and things you end up doing. Yeah. Um, but Geelong and Hawthorne never mix. So yeah. I didn't really know anyone other than Mitch Duncan because his brother-in-law lived with me for okay. a few months. But... Uh, yeah, it was very odd. Yeah. Um, and Joel and I had had a few conversations on the phone, so uh, I didn't know how the dressing room uh, were going to receive me. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't take long for the video of me missing a shot. I can't really remember what happened, but I missed a shot for Hawthorne against Geelong, and yep, uh, it didn't take it. long for that to be put up on the screen. And, <laughs> Uh, that was quite nice because it just broke the ice and <laughs> yeah, I was away from there, which was good. How good is that? Wow. Hey, uh, what's been the biggest crowd that you've played in front of and how did you feel walking out into the field for the first time? And I, I know that you've just played in the grand final, which was huge. You broke the records for the amount of people that were there. But um, th- that's the biggest crowd you've played in front of, for example, for you, Brad? And, and what was that emotion like coming up the race? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, 100,000. Um, yeah, I... Obviously, it was probably good that it wasn't half Collingwood crowd. That would have been probably crazy again. But, mm. um, yeah, being able to see so much blue and white in the crowd as well, yeah. I think we definitely um, had the majority there. Yeah. Um, and then even, yeah, the Collingwood game, I know the crowd was huge there, and I just remember seeing a lot of little white and blue flags. I don't know if you saw it, but a lot of the bays of ours, I don't know, they must have given out flags, and as we run out, you just see these little flags in the crowd across the whole... Stadium, which is weird, it reminded me a bit like the F1 actually when you see wow. the flags going. Yes. But that was, um, yeah, a bit like that. Go- it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wow. yeah. And then the, the national anthem, I think, is the big one where yeah. the heart starts racing and yeah. yeah, goosebumps, and you know it's it's nearly go time. Brilliant, love it. Yeah, I'll, just, uh, just probably just because you've you've played now four premierships, okay. Yeah. Um, what's probably been the biggest crowd that had the most vocalised? I suppose, what I'd be looking for from you? Well, I was going to say, fortunately enough, all four premierships uh, that I've been involved in, um, we've won quite easily. So, yeah, wow. Uh, it's been a very one-sided crowd towards the end. But yeah, right. we played a prelim final uh, for Hawthorne back in 2015 at Subiaco. Okay. And it was, I think there was, they worked out, there was like 200 Hawks fans in the stadium or something, and the rest were Fremantle. <laughs> um, and they are feral. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And it was, yeah, it was intimidating. I remember yeah. um, there's vision of me. I ended up running into the fence, and it looked like Freo Blight was going to punch me in there. And there ended up being big fights in the stand. And no. Yeah, it was crazy. Wow. Uh, that was probably the loudest crowd I've played in front of. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, well that's the answer I was looking for. If it was your choice, what position would you like to play on the ground, or you're happy with the role that you've got? Uh, full forward. Because okay. they get paid the most. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or fall back in a really good team. Yeah. Because you'd never see the ball. Wow. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, a bit of Tom Stewart and a bit of Tom Organs. All right. What about you, Brad? Yeah, I think everyone grows up wanting to be a midfielder a bit too. A little yeah. inside mid would be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they're, the ones, no, the <laughs> they're the ones... I don't have the body for any of these <laughs> positions. <laughs> the but then if you, are, if you asked uh, inside mid, they'd say, oh, I'd love to be able to play on the wing. Yeah. yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, well, OK, it's like, it's like that. Uh, was footy the only sport that you ever thought about playing? Uh, and, and I ask this, obviously, uh, with you as well, because coming from New South Wales, was there any other options for you that you thought about or was always going to uh, be football? Yeah, I, was always, I played a hell of a lot more cricket than footy okay. um, then ended up uh, ruining my back. So that sort of um, took cricket out of the equation. Played a hell of a lot of touch footy, yep. uh, which isn't so big down here, mm. but it's massive in New South Wales. And... Um, did a fair bit of running, so... Yeah, right. Yeah, they were sort of my sports. Okay. 
Yeah, I also played cricket as well. Um, played a fair bit of basketball as well, a bit of state basketball for SA. So, not that I was any good. I was pretty small and yeah, um, just a small forward. Paddy Mills does all right. Yeah, that's it. Just he's a, he's a full-time golfer, part-time footballer, classy. Ah, okay. Uh, all he's right. still crap. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, glad you cleared that up. Um, do you watch a lot of TV, uh, footy on TV now, or is it less or more? Is, and if it is, is the sound up or down? So do you watch a lot? And if you do? Yeah, you go first. No, I don't really watch much at all, to oh, be really? honest. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nah. Okay, all right. Well, I've been through ebbs and flows in my career. Some mm. years I don't watch any. Okay. And then this year I really enjoyed watching footy. So yeah, good. So watched a fair bit of it. But um, I have no idea of the new generation coming through. So yeah. I remember... I probably shouldn't say this, but grand final day, I ran out. Mm. Um, and the guy I lined up next to, I had no idea who his name was. <laughs> I had to look at his number and go, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just make sure I'm near you when the stoppage has happened. So, um, wow. It's, uh, it's funny. And, and I'm not saying that to be arrogant. Or, no, no, no. Of it's not. more, there's so many players that come through the yeah. system yeah. Um, that you need to sort of stop and go, oh, yeah, shit, oh, that's, that's him. For sure, think, for sure. So. Yeah, no, I get it. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. Um, uh, before a big game, do you like your own space? Are you nervous, anxious, talkative? Um, are you quiet or are you just like going through your own routine? Uh, being that you've been playing uh, 258 games now, what's your routine like and what do you go through? And you as well, oh, obviously. I you can probably explain me. I, I don't yeah, I'll, I'll explain either. Yeah, please. Well, for myself, I'm pretty quiet. I'm just um, pretty relaxed. I don't really like to waste any energy. Um, Isaac, we usually probably meet in the, the food room for a little sandwich and a couple of coughs, uh, cups of coffee. Um, he's always got lollies probably in his mouth somewhere too. Um, <laughs> runs out in his trackies, never sort of ready to go. A couple of times he's run out without his Guernsey on. Um, had to run off quickly to get his Guernsey before the bounce. Um, yeah, he's pretty relaxed, which wow. it's, it's great to have around the club. Um, he sort of keeps the boys pretty, yeah, relaxed and in a good mood, um, so they're not sort of, yeah, too nervous, I guess. Well, that's good, a bit of a nervous energy. Um, now that he's just done that, reciprocate, what, what would you say Brad's like? Uh, Brad's quite relaxed for a young guy, okay. uh, very quiet, just yep. sort of goes about his own business. Yep. Um, but we need a couple of us because there's a, bloke, a few blokes in the dressing room that get quite worked up before a game. So yeah, okay. the old bloke, you've got to switch on, all that type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, right. I thought the world would pass that. But yeah. uh, okay. no, it's, um, it's a nice change room. There's blokes that complement each other. Yeah, good. Well, that's what you really need, isn't it? Yeah, okay. You've been handed a first-class ticket to travel anywhere in the world, and I know that um, I did see a few things of you. Uh, you've done Europe. You um, would have had the misses in it. Um, suggestively. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've been handed a first-class ticket to go anywhere in the world. I presume where you've just been has been a bucket list or something you've wanted to do. Is that... Am I true in uh, suggesting that? Yeah, absolutely. Ticked off a few places for sure. Give, um, us a, give us a bit of insight, a snapshot of what you've just been through. Yeah, so I took um, the missus over to Italy, uh, Greece, and then to the UK. And wow. I guess the biggest bucket list was going to Old Trafford, Manchester United, big supporter. So I like right. a lot of different sports, NBA, NFL, soccer, yep. sort of anything. I'm a bit of a sport nuffy. Um, but yeah, I got there and saw Ronaldo score. So um, oh, that was a, wow. a big moment. Um, the missus hated it, but um, <laughs> I said, this is my one night of the trip. I'll <laughs> let you have whatever else you How like. How cool so. is that? What was, the, what was the best experience, aside from that, uh, that you ventured to, like um, picturesque-wise? Yeah, Italy is amazing. Obviously, the Colosseum, to think of how old it is. Yeah. And um, imagine if we were wrestling um, in the middle of the MCG against <laughs> Avon Lions, clean us up or whatever. It would be pretty, pretty crazy. Wow. And give us... You've been handed a first-class ticket. Where are you heading to? Yeah, I'm not sure. I've been fortunate. Um, I've been all over the globe. Me mm. and my wife were big travellers before kids. OK. That threw a spinner in the works. Yeah. Um, Tends to. Uh, the Soccer World Cup final... Um, and I'm not a huge soccer fan, but I just think that would be an unbelievable event. Yeah. Yep. Um, I didn't get a pass to go um, this year. Two yep. young kids doesn't allow that to happen. But, yep. uh, yeah, something like that it, it would okay. interest me. Other than that, I'm a big, uh, and it'd probably bore the room, but I'm a big fan of politics. So uh, wow. going to the Kremlin right now would be pretty interesting, mm. <laughs> seeing what's going on behind yeah, those walls. That would be interesting. Um, 
how are you with flying as we speak of that? Are you the kind that needs headphones on, need a pillow? I talk about when you are doing domestic around Australia and you're flying backwards and forwards for games. Uh, are you the kind that needs leg room? You need a pillow, you put your headphones on, you tune in, you've got um, something on Netflix or Stan. What's, what's your routine? Yeah, I could probably fall asleep before the plane takes off. I'm pretty good. Close he takes his little neck pillow. No, 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 no. But the thing is, I feel like the flights are some of the funnest parts. We're always playing cards and stuff, so okay. nowadays I try not to sleep and we just play cards, which is, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, all right. Yeah, my, I, I love flights, um, yeah. and whoever allowed Wi-Fi to be on aeroplanes really gives me the shits because it's the only time in your life where you can disconnect from the world. Yeah, so right. I actually don't mind just sitting in my seat, putting some headphones on. Uh, they usually got nothing playing in them. Uh, it's just that you get two hours of peace. Wow. <laughs> How cool is that? I like that. And, yeah, and of course, the old bloke is you... up the front in business, so the rest uh, of us are down wow. the back. You've got to look after the legs. Yeah. <laughs> um, who's been your biggest influence in your footy journey so far? I know you alluded to your dad with 400 games. Would he probably be that person? Yeah, I reckon the old man. Um, he's, yeah, obviously he's coached me when I was younger, um, and then now he's um, a bit of a fan, I guess. And yeah. Seeing what it meant to him on, on the grand final as well, um, it's pretty special. Yeah, I bet it was. Isaac? Uh, yeah, old oh man, but um, I'll say Nigel Lappin's been my biggest influence since I've come to Geelong. Okay. Uh, he's been a great coach for me, so yep. um, from a Geelong point of view, Nigel's been That's really brilliant. Good. Yeah, cool. Um, there are confidence players, listen to all of these, there are confidence players, natural ability players, and those who thrive on the big stage and soak in all the atmosphere. Which of these describes you best, do you think? None of the above. About what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know. You no. Got, you'd be better off answering. Yeah, really. <laughs> big game player. Yeah, I think big, big game player. You soak, it, soak in the atmosphere. You seem to be quite calm on grand final day. I thought that. I presume most of you would think that uh, you look that way. Um, being completely honest, what th one thing do you do that you think, from your personal point of view, is your skill or asset? Is it your strength? Is it your determination? Is it your kicking style, your marking ability, your tackling pressure, your never-say-die attitude, your ability to connect with others, or just generally your ability to read the play? It could be an, a number or all of those things, but what would you suggest the kind of player you are? Yeah, I guess for myself, uh, tackle pressure is probably something that I um, like to rate. Um, I guess it's something you can do whether you're getting a kick or not, so yeah. it can bring into the game um, without worrying about what else is going on. So. Okay. Good. Uh, ability to forget. Uh, sounds silly, but no. uh, in footy, so many players hold on to mistakes for too long, and if you can just let them go and think about the next play, uh, although it gives my wife the shits that I forget so many things at home, and yeah. um, my, yeah, I actually think it's quite a strength to yeah. not worry about the past and be thinking of the future. Is that a hindsight thing now, Isaac, because of your age and the amount of games that you have played that you now have that ability? No, I think it's just something I've always had. You've I'm always not sure if uh, it was genetic or yeah, right. just the way mum and dad brought us up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's been fortunate. That that's I've, a blessing. That's an attribute. Yeah, yeah that's great. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Please put your hands together for them. Each other. We're going to introduce it. It's called Simply the Best. All right. Here we go. So, you've got 12 questions. As soon as you think you know the answer, buzz in. It'd be great if you could wait until I could read out the entirety of the question before you buzz in. That way, you know, well, you'll get to know the whole question, won't you? Simple as that. Uh, here comes your first question. Who was your team's captain in 2022? Darcy. Darcy. Joel Selwood. There you go, one point. See, how, that's how it works, Gordon. You've just got to get in and nice and quick and answer the question. Question number two, where did Geelong finish on the ladder at the end of the home and away season this year? Darcy. Darcy. <laughs> Gordon's just said Darcy. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, Gordon, no, it's oh, not. Geelong finished first. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Darcy. All right. Nice try, though, Gordo. I like that. Try, try again. And... Yeah, 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 OK. Um, there we go. Question number three. Who wears the number seven at the Geelong Football Club? Darcy. Darcy. Isaac Smith. There you go. Fantastic. That's a score of three. Do you want to test your microphone for me, Gordo? Yep. 
Okay. It's a good enough test for me. All right. This is worth two points, um, gentlemen. Um, for player and goals, who was your club's leading goal kicker in 2022 and how many goals did they kick for two points? Buzz in. Darcy. I'm going to go Jeremy Cameron. Darcy saying Jeremy Cameron. Uh, You'd be wrong. Gordo, do you want to have a go? Hawkins. That's correct. How many goals, mate? Have a stab in the dark. 50-something. Did you say 67? Yeah. You'd be right. <laughs> well done, Gordo. Well done, champ. I like that. All right. Tom Hawkins for 67 goals. Question number five. How many games did your team win this year at the end of the home and away season? 18. Is that you, Gordo? Good. Yeah, you've got to buzz in, my friend. But yes, it was 18. You got it. Correct. Congratulations. Uh, that's uh, three versus three. Scores are level. How many losing grand finals has the Geelong Football Club played in? 18. No, you've got to buzz in. <laughs> and was your answer 18? Gordon. Yes. And was your answer 18? Yeah. You'd be wrong. Do you mm. want to have a go, Darcy? Oh, I wouldn't have a clue. I'm going to guess... Oh, I'm going to guess nine. Ten. Bad yeah. luck. So close, mate. So close. Closest to within a thousand. How many members did your club end up with at the end of the 2022 home and away season? Uh, Darcy. Darcy, yes. Did we get to 80,000? No, you didn't. Mm. Would you like to have a go, Gordon? 60. Oh, I think it's ten. Still, still there? <laughs> Gordo. You got a number for me? Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> Woo. Breaking, breaking all the premiership records down there, are you? Eleven members. Wow. That's not bad, Gordo. Might need to check that hearing aid. I don't know. That's, uh, that's not, not quite right, mate. You finished up with 71,943. Just a little bit more than eleven. Uh, Woo wee. Okay, uh, here we go for question number eight. How many premierships has the Geelong Football Club won? Nine. Who? Gordon. How many, Gordon? Gordon, now you can shout it out. How many? Gordon, tell me. Ten. Ten, yes! Oh. Well done, Gordo. Ten. So even Isaac's checking on you now. He wants to make sure you're all right down there. All right, what have we got score-wise? Um, this is four versus three. All right. Here's you're, in, your... you're in front, Gordon. Don't you, listen you're to him. <laughs> you're in front, Gordon. I don't, I don't know how, but this is amazing. Uh, this is worth three points, OK? Oh. For three points, player, year, votes. Who was the last Geelong player to win a Brownlow medal? Darcy. What year and how many votes? Darcy. Darcy. Uh, Patrick Dangerfield. That's one point. Oh... Uh, I'm going to go 2016. That's two points. Well done. Oh, uh, and votes. I reckon I'm going to go 35. All three oh. points. Well done, Darcy. Congratulations. Well done. That's worth three points. So now it's uh, you're in front, six versus four. Well done. All right, uh, question number 10. What year did your team last win a grand final and who did they play? Darcy. Darcy. That's up to you, mate. Oh, well, I'm counting this year. 2022 Geelong Cats. We yeah. won the grand final against the Sydney Swans. That's beautiful. Well done. Yes, that's you did. Just that's one. excellent. That's just, oh, that's just worth one point, that one. Can't. No cheating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what have we got? Six versus... Uh, f four versus seven. Didn't, I thought he was on... OK. Yeah, four versus seven. That's right. Yeah, OK. Uh, how many points did you win that grand final by? The Darcy. Grand final? Yeah, it's Darcy. 81. 81 is correct. He moves down to eight. I'll make this one worth four points if you get it right, Gordon. It'll be a draw. But no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> OK, this is your final question. What year and who was the last Geelong player to win a Norm Smith medal? Isaac Smith. Oh, yeah, Darcy. Gordon. Gordon. Isaac Smith. Yes. Well done. Fantastic. That's it. Simply the best. Wow.
Gordon, you were nothing short of entertaining, let me just tell you. Thank you very much for being part of it. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Darcy, you are simply the best, though. Uh, and Darcy, for that, you get to um, take home a Bar Essentials gift pack. Oh, How's that? Yeah, no, perfect, perfect gift for a 14-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Bar Essentials uh, gift pack. Uh, you've got two stubby holders, two um, uh, 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 drinks. Um, yeah, drink but you don't responsibly. Go, uh, don't, yeah, don't go, <laughs> drink responsibly, yes. Don't go home empty-handed, Gordo. Well done. There's a football for you. All right? Probably could go the other way around, but well done. <laughs> That was good. <laughs>charlie you're going to be keeping score 45 seconds on the clock every time you hear this that means you got it right you turn your paddle over every time he gets it wrong you hear that nothing gets that nothing happens brad that's how it's going to work you have to give me their christian name and their surname not not any nicknames okay can pass or? Uh, you can pass if you don't know the answer absolutely well well said so 45 seconds on the clock your time will start on your first one let's see how many you can get you've just you've just won a premiership with these guys so it should be pretty easy should you know. reckon yeah yeah okay i thought so all right here comes your first one your time starts now number 39 zach guthrie correct number 42 mark o'connor correct number 44 tom stewart correct number 46 mark litzavs correct number three brandon parfitt correct number six toby conway correct number 18 tyson stengel correct number eight Jake Collajasny. Correct, number 10. Mitch Nevitt. Correct, number 11. Uh, Cooper White. Correct, number 16. Sam DeConing. Correct, number 17. Asava Radagalia. Correct, number 22. Mitch Duncan. Correct, number 25. Flynn Kroger. Correct, number 35. Patrick Dangerfield. Correct, number 29. <laughs> Cam Guthrie. Correct, number 33. Shannon Neal. Correct, number 28. I'll give it to you. 28 is Ollie Dempsey. Whoa! He got it. He got that one. He finished up. He got that last one as well. He got that one? Yeah. Well how, done. How, how many did he get? How many was it, Charlie? 17. Wow. I wouldn't have got 10 of them. Wow. How good was that? And I nearly got Dangerfield wrong. <laughs> that would have been funny, going back to the club, going, oh, yeah, you might have to do the Isaac thing and ask him to turn around so you can have a look at the number on his back. Um, well done, mate. That's a really good score, 17. Um, Isaac, you got, have to beat 17, OK? I'm sure you can do that. It's not a hard ask, is it? Yeah, of course it's not. All right. Um, so what's going to be happening here, Jack? You're going to be keeping score. Same thing applies. Your first one starts on now. Number 45. Close here. Brad Close. Yes, exactly. Number one. Ray Stanley. Correct. Number 38. Pass. Jack Henry. Number 42. Mark O'Connor. Yeah, did it before. 39. Zach Guthrie. Yes, correct. Number two. Zach Tui. Correct. Number f number five. Ja Jeremy Cameron. Correct. Number seven. Isaac Smith. Correct. Number nine. Max Holmes. Correct. Number 20. Pass. Mm. James Willis, number 16. Sam McConney. Yes, number 15. John Segler. Yes, number 24. Be Busey. Yeah, well, first, Jed Buse. Jed Buse. What do you finish up with? 12. 12. We have a winner. Break close, you're in. Well done. Fantastic. What a result. A couple of double ups help. Yeah, well, I, I kind of I felt, I was feeling for you there, and I thought if I throw those in, it might just get you across the line. It didn't work, though. Uh, congratulations. We don't have any winners or losers here. We just have winners. You both won because uh, Brad Close did it for you. There's a football for you. There's a football for you. Leave your paddles oh, down the yeah. front. Thanks very much. Well done, boys. Good stuff. What I wanted to do is just thank you, uh, each and every one of you, for your patronage this evening. Thank you for coming along and being part of the That's Good Footy panel show. Thank you for, um, well, everything that, that happened tonight. I'm glad that you got to witness it and be part of it. I, I just now just want to say thanks to Sam. He's done 30 shows with me this year. You're a champion, mate. Thank you. Thank you to Sandra as well. Could you please put your hands together for both the guys? There's only three of us that do these shows and some people say, yeah, it looks like it. But then there's others that say, no, that's amazing. Well done, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. But while you're feeling as jovial as you are, could you please put your hands together for both Brad Close, Isaac Smith. 
It's been a real pleasure having them on. I want to leave the last words up to you, boys. What would you like to say, if anything? Oh, thanks for having us, and thanks yep. for the support all year. It's, uh, it's been lovely since I've moved down to Geelong. I've Good. I've felt all of it, so thank you. Excellent. And let's just do it again next year. <laughs> You'll always win the fans with that one, won't you? That was good. Uh, I just need to let you know, as I explained to you at the start of the show, the next That's Good Footy panel show will be held here on November the 30th, uh, featuring Collingwood players Tom Mitchell and Braden Maynard. Remember, when purchasing tickets, only purchase them through the That's Good Footy website, www.thatsgoodfooty.com.au forward slash events. Click on the link in the post on the That's Good Footy Facebook page. This will take you through to the ticketing platform. You cannot purchase your tickets any anywhere else. That's all I needed to let you know. Um, I just wanted to say, I hope you guys have had a good time tonight. We've enjoyed your company. Um, the boys have enjoyed your company. I'm not speaking on their behalf, but I know that they have. Um, all I wanted to say to you has been, this has been the That's uh, Good for Footy panel show. My name's Damien. Thanks, everyone. I we'll hope to get see you again soon. Have a good night. Cheers, guys. Free!